Insight. Yes, that welcome. was the one. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Welcome. <laughs> Good evening, ladies, and happy holidays. We're so excited to be Zooming this event from our beautiful clubhouse tonight, and so happy you can join us. If you missed last month's entertaining program with Cheryl Feuerborn and Susan Coolidge, who presented on wonderful floral holiday decorating tips, you can still see it on our website. Tonight, we have some tips on etiquette. And we're going to, the committee will be Lynn King, Leslie Malloy, Lynn Grosser, Louise Benante, and myself. Next month, Monique Mollenkamp will share some pointers on good books to read. And by the way, the Zoom ID for each meeting night is the same every month. You can find it on page 12 of your yearbook. We start at six, cocktail 6.30 program on the usual meeting night. We're very happy to report we had our second successful blood drive on, De on December 4th. My talent was quite pleased. We had 47 donors, most of which were from the general community. I'd like to thank Nancy Frazier and Lynn Grosser from organizing the event and many thanks also to the volunteers. Thank you. We're looking forward to probably having another third blood drive in March. As you know, um, about this time, we normally support Petaluma People Services, a nonprofit that offers many services to those in need. But this year, we were not able to have our 1,000 bowls event. But we'd like to encourage you to consider a donation to Petaluma People Services. We know it would be very much appreciated this year, especially. In other news, Linda Buffo is spearheading a committee to uh, working on a Finding Our Roots exhibit for the Petaluma Museum, uh, their historical exhibit in March. As you may know, the museum has offered to scan our documents for us in return for safekeeping our documents in the future. So it's a win-win situation. Linda is planning a historic video focusing on specific periods of the club's history to be narrated by historic characters in costume and will also contain comments on present day activities of the club. Several of your board members have generously stepped forward to sponsor this project. We're happy to report that the club remains on track in controlling its expenses. We should have sufficient funds to last us until we collect dues again come June. However, we are still going to go ahead with a non-event fundraiser at the end of January. As we do have some funds in our restoration fund available, we are planning to have our beautiful French glass doors here behind me repaired so that they can be used more easily. And this will happen in January and will take at least six weeks to complete. If you're interested in purchasing one, purchasing any wine, we do have some wonderful Pinot Noir available yes. from the speaker series. Um, it's being stored at Carrie Davison's office. So if you're interested, please let me know and um, I will help you out. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> this isn't really clubhouse news, but Monday night, uh, a special universal event is happening in the skies. You may have heard that Saturn and Jupiter are lining up um, together in our western skies. And this hasn't happened for eight, 800 years. And it was said to have happened at the birth of Jesus. So hopefully we'll get some good weather Monday night and we'll all be able to enjoy that spectacle. <laughs> if no one else has anything to share, I'll, we'll, we'll go ahead with our event tonight. Um, go ahead, Lene. Okay. Welcome and thank you for attending. How fun is this? Uh, since we can't meet, we wanted to have it live, aired live at the clubhouse so that you can have the club close in your hearts because we are the members, we are keeping this club alive. And thank you. Uh, tonight, we're gonna be talking about cocktail party, uh, cocktail party fun and etiquette 
with the focus on PWC, the way that PWC does things. So it'll have a little bit of extra, you know, bling bling on the way that the awesome PWC women like to do things. Okay, so before, I'm gonna have Sue talk about the first number one tip. Number one tip, the art of the RSVP. RSVP is derived from the French phrase, Réponde s'il vous plaît, which means literally reply if you please, or please reply. It gives the hostess energy. It helps immensely for knowing how much food and beverages will be required, the needed number of hired staff, how many plates, how many glasses to have on hand, how to assure proper seating arrangements and so forth. It's greatly respectful to RSVP immediately upon receiving an invitation. Once you've sent an RSVP to the host, you should decline any other social invites in honor of the first one you accepted. That means if you, if a better offer comes your way, grab it. Uh, oops. No. Whoops, wait, <laughs> I mean, we should decline it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, oh yes, I, I wanted to mention, RSVP is important and it's important as Sue is mentioning for the hostess to have the energy and to plan the committee to plan the tables. One year uh, at Christmas here at the clubhouse we had 60 RSVPs. Fantastic. And at the door 18 people showed up without reservations including me <laughs> and I know when everything's happening around here. And so what that did is the, the committee and the chairs, they had to scramble to put three more tables up. So think about that. So it's really important to RSVP. Okay. A personal note, have you ever had anybody not reply to your party invitation? And then the day of the, your party, she says, she'd like to come. Well, I figured out how to handle that situation. Just ask her to bring the entree. <laughs> and now we're on to tip number two. Okay, decorating uh, for your parties. We, we, we have a couple of things that we normally do around here and all the chairs know how to decorate this clubhouse. And the first thing is to decorate the foyer. Many times the landing <clears throat> has a beautiful decor and a welcoming that goes along with the theme. And then they'll decorate the mantle and it'll be themed uh, according to, accordingly. And, uh, and the hors d'oeuvre table that has a nice flow around it so people can chit chat and flow around it. It has a beautiful something in, in the middle of it that is representative and welcoming. And then the table centerpieces, very, very coordinated. You, that's what makes it real special to come. And of course, if it's a, a bigger event and we have the energy, we'll do some outrageous things on the stage. Okay, so that's decorating tips. It's that welcoming. We know how that goes. All right, and now for tip number three, Louise Benante. Hi, everybody. Merry Christmas. Tip number three, the theme of the event. Very often, our events will have a theme, such as we've had in the past Cinco de Mayo, <clears throat> an evening in Paris, or seeing Thailand. Of course, the food will be part of the theme, the food of the country, but we also like to dress in costume. So if you have a costume, nothing elaborate, just something fun, please wear your costume. But it's not mandatory. Just come as you are. Well, you know, <laughs> have some clothes on. <laughs> okay, come as, come as you want to, because we just like you to be there. Okay, on to tip number four. It's the guest's arrival. Of course, we want you to think about the time and uh, be on time. If you're a little bit early, we ask you to wait in the foyer or on the porch until the committees are ready to open the door into the fireside room 
And so uh, please re be respectful of the committees. And we ask you to come in a good mood <laughs> with a smile on your face and happiness coming out of your mouth. <laughs> so on to tip number five, which will be presented by Lynn Thank you, Louise. <laughs> Louise has that, that, that warm, open heart always. You know, when you see her, we come into the crab feed, hi, and she's running the show and she still can say, hi, glad you're here. You know, it's a really nice feeling. So tip, tip number five, we're gonna talk about graceful potlucks. It made it into the tips. It's not that we do potlucks when we do events at the club, but often we'll do side things like the thank you party uh, brunch at Esther's, Esther Shaw's home. People brought wonderful contributions and, and they did it in a very nice way. And if you can't bring a, a elegant or a platter of, of something that's easy to eat and, and share, then bring a wine or bubbly or soda. It's those kinds of things are really important. The, the thing you don't want to do is like bring bread that needs to be cut <laughs> or soup that needs to be heated. <laughs> and then when you're done, uh, when you're ready to leave the event, make sure that you collect your platter and the utensils <laughs> that you brought to serve it. Because if the hostess has to keep, uh, the committee, the hostess, has to keep track of all of the platters and who it is and track everybody down, it's like, it takes it away. So just remember to bring everything that you brought. Uh, we also had a, a party here with uh, Jim, uh, Jim Dowell, and it was a he was our custodian and uh, for th 17 years, and we threw him a party, and and the uh, the luncheon ladies came and the evening ladies came, and it was really fun, and it was just like that. Just when we do a holiday decorating, it's a small committee, people bring things to share. Okay, so I wanted to share about potlucks. All right, and now on to Sue again, our president, for tip number six. Tip number six, common courtesy. At our large PWC events, we should always remember common courtesy be sure to turn off your cell phone, your pager, or any other gadgets that may be disruptive before entering the event. If you expect a business or a personal call, step outside to handle it. Have you, oh, oops, my phone's ringing. Oops, sorry. Have you ever, have you ever tried to hold a conversation with someone who gets interrupted by a cell phone call? It's very annoying. Also, we should listen respectfully if someone is speaking, <laughs> especially the president. <laughs> um, if an entertainer is performing, please be silent until the end. That means no talking. However, it's fine to take pictures. And now for tip number seven. Man. Okay. Is that, is that one? No. Okay. All right. Tip number seven: Hostess head. It's it's an interesting term. Hostess head. Think about when you've thrown a party, and you're you want everything to be perfect, and and all the details done. This the bar is set up. The the entrance is set up. The the decorations are set up. The front is swept. All those little details, and so. Often a hostess will have be a little crazy and because she wants it to be perfect. She wants it to have a, the image of, of what she created to welcome everybody. So it's, it's very important to respect that. And Louise talked about that by not arriving or, or you know, banging to get in the door um, before everything is, is complete and done. And um, and so if you do arrive and come into the room, be, be, take care of yourself. Don't be asking questions and, and it's all about you. You know, be, manage your energy, come in, 
and you can see where the bar is. And you, if you have a guest, bring them to the bar. You can take care of yourself and you're not demanding extra attention to make them crazy. Hostess head, it's an interesting term. Okay, now the we are now going to go uh, live on, on, on to Leslie Malloy's home where she is gonna be presenting tips nine and 10. So Terri Ann, take it away to Leslie Malloy. I'm not Leslie. <laughs> So, Leslie, can you unmute yourself? There you there go. There you go. Okay. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy New Year. Coming from Leslie's home, I'm going to talk about the hosts welcoming the guests. And um, I want you all to know and remember that the hosts are really everybody, but the committee and two co chairs. And so after people line up and pay their money, there are going to be some people that have little name tags that you can tell that they're either a guest or a new member. So it's the job of the committee to appoint one or two people to stand in the doorway to the fireside room and introduce themselves to the new person, tell them where the coat rack is, show them where the appetizers are, show them where the bar is. And also, because you have to get back to your station, bring them and introduce them to one or two other people that might be standing in a group. Those people, and this is where it comes for all the members' responsibility, is to welcome that new person in, ask them some questions. You know, tr ask them questions about themselves, for example, you know, where do you, where do you live? Who brought you? How did you find out about the club? And we want to make an emotional connection with the guests. So here we get into number nine, which is about mingling. So when we mingle, we want to exactly do that. We want to try to connect with the new person or even our members that haven't showed up in a while. Because if we make an emotional connection, most likely we'll retain members and new people will join. So mingle away people and do avoid those three topics that we, like, we should avoid, right? Politics, religion, and probably sex too. Okay, so go ahead and just, you know, forget about those topics. And as Louise said, bring your smile and talk about pleasant things, which to be honest, most of us usually do. Okay, now I have tip number 10, which is another thing that members can be aware of is the committees have worked really, really hard and the co-chairs to give us a themed and really nice event. So it'd be really nice if you remember to, you know, give them a little praise and appreciation. Gee, we really like the food. If there's a guest speaker, you know, compliment them, um, compliment the committee's outfits or anything you can think of to show your appreciation. And now moving forward, we have number 12 back with, I think it is Lynn. We have number 11. Take it away, Lynn. It's number 11. It's number 11. No, oh, number 11. Sorry, number back 11, the, Lynn. Back to the clubhouse. No, Sue Bunker, sorry. Sorry, you guys. So number 11 is Sue, Sue Bunker. Sorry about that. Okay, so Terry Ann, can you take us back to, to the oh. Thank you, Leslie. Oh, you're welcome, guys. Oh, number 12 is Lynn. Okay, 11 is Sue. 
while we're waiting, that's a pretty neat hat, Leslie. Thank you. Yes, I got it at the, the vintage shop that used to be on Kentucky. Unfortunately, it's not there. I think I've worn it to a couple of events. At the, I've had it for a few years. And I figured I needed a good hat for the women's car. In the immortal words of uh, that uh, Scarlett O'Hara, what, this old thing? <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> this old thing. Hey, that's a good idea for a, a movie to watch over Christmas. Gone with the wind. So I have Louise down as number 10. I know, but Leslie did. I know, uh, but, but no. yesterday. Moving on to the clubhouse. OK, you're on clubhouse now. OK. We you're see on. your chin, Lynn <laughs> <laughs> Okay. okay, tip number 11, toasting the guests or guests. Toasting brings a festive... What's that? Toasting brings a festive air to a gathering. It has a way of bringing together those that are present. A toast is a compliment, an acknowledgement of the event and the guest. The host should propose the first toast to begin the event, a welcoming toast. In this circumstance, Everyone participates in the toast. Toast should be kept short, simple, and sincere. Here's an example. Here's to Adam, father of us all. He was Johnny on the spot when the leaves began to fall. <laughs> uh, excuse me, for some reason, Leslie is still on speaker view and Sue is not. Yeah, I was noticing that too. So it's. Oh yeah, you want to replay that because it's it's a little skit. You need to put the view on Lynn Ann. So are and we talking so... spotlighting? Should Terry Ann spotlight Lynn Ann? Yes. Yes. Put her. Put Lynn Ann and Sue on the big. Okay. If you can make them. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it. I got it. Thank okay. you. That's me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So toast, as I was saying, should be kept short, simple, and sincere. Here's an example. Here's Adam, <laughs> father of us all. He was Johnny on the spot when the leaves began to fall. <laughs> when a toast is given in honor of a special guest, that guest does not sip. The other guests sip after the toast is been given, but the honored guest simply nods her head in respect. Never drink to your own toast. It would be as though you're patting yourself on the back. Now, I would like to propose a toast to Lenan King, the glue that holds the club together by hosting our Zoom events and making sure e-blasts get out in a timely manner. <laughs> she performs myriad other tasks, such as getting her marketing committee to decorate the clubhouse. She donates flower pot displays for our entrance and so forth and so on. Here's to you, Lenin. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Wait, 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 I'm not supposed to. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. See, we're trying, we did this on purpose so that you remember, I do not drink. <laughs> I hope you remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and now here's to all you wonderful members of the club. May you enjoy a very Merry Christmas and here's to a very happy new year in 2021. Cheers. When do I get to drink? <laughs> We're here. Hey. And now on to tip 12, drinking. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go to, uh, we're gonna go to Lynn Gross. Lynn. Can you do that? Yeah. Uh, can you do that, Terry? Yeah. <clears throat> well, I can't I hear don't her. See Lynn. Lynn. I, I don't see Lynn on here at all. Did she go? Did she drop off? She's not yeah, on. She's there. She's muted. I'm here. There she is. Okay. Well, I'm gonna find you. Let me go. There it is. I'm going to spotlight her. Okay, there it is. Okay, oh, there's. Okay. Oh, I see. You ready to go? Electric Lynn. Electric Lynn. Um, happy holidays to all of you. It's a pleasure to be with you. 
um, virtually. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we were just doing. We were toasting, we, we were drinking. Um, and and um, as, as the host, hostess, uh, person holding the event, um, some, some helpful tips would be, for example, instead of saying, what may I get you? And they have absolutely no idea what you have and maybe order something you don't have like Dom Perignon. Ooh, I don't have that, but I have Corbel. Um, it's better to give them choices, the guest choices. So if you can say perhaps something like, I've got a nice IPA, I've got a local Chardonnay from Sonoma County, et cetera. It, it narrows it down and it, it helps free you up from getting bogged down in trying to entertain and tend to all of your guests. And certainly as the guest, depending on what you do uh, select as your beverage, uh, don't be kicking back with that IPA in the bottle. Ask for a glass. Uh, certainly this isn't a football game in front of the big screen or whatever. So uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, a decorum in, in more of a social environment. Um, and then of course we are in wine country. So just for just a second, uh, I wanna chat just a little bit about serving your guests if they do order wine, for example, um, a white wine or rosé is gonna be chilled. And you'll notice if you can see, I'm holding the glass where, where my hands are not on, on the part of the stem where it's going to come into contact with the bowl. Uh, and this is because we don't we don't want to mess with the temperature of the wine. And also, as the server, we're keeping enough room in the bowl when we pour that we have the ability to let the guest swirl, sniff, and sip. And the same concept with the red wine, um, enough room in the bowl. Same thing. So in short, the, the answer to that is, is not to fill her up, leave room. Anyway, um, moving along, we have the water station that we wanna chat about just briefly. It's in fashion um, and certainly we promote it more, especially alternating during the event as well as when guests are in the second half of the event and are thinking about getting on the road, um, wanting to kind of dial down, having a good time, but making sure they're hydrated. So have that area separate from your bartending area so that they can help themselves pretty much. And when they do depart, they have something perhaps that's ready to go in its own container and be on their way. So um, for example, our sips and bites, can't wait for that. Again, I actually helped out with that um, when we had the last one in 2019. It was wonderful and the water station was absolutely perfect. So I, I say, if you were there, a lot of people were, take, take off that page because it, it was spectacular. So anyway, that's all I wanted to chat about. Again, happy holidays, and I'm going to turn it back live to the clubhouse. You good with that, Terri Ann? Back to Lynn Ann. Where do you want me to go now? Clubhouse, clubhouse. Go back to Lynn Ann. Oh, I got you guys. No, no, don't talk, Mark. Are we ready? Hold on a minute. Let's see, I've got Lynn. 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 Okay. Okay. Tip number 14, eating. <laughs> Cocktail parties like to have 
various noshes and it's it's a really important thing the first focus however is connecting with people and talking and chit chatting it's not really about eating and and drinking so much as socializing and sipping and noshing a little bit and in fact if you are the type that gets super hungry before you go to an event have an apple before you go <laughs> so you're not arriving starving <laughs> And uh, you don't want to overload your plate. And so I have made two samples of some plates. One is uh, delicate and appropriate. The other one is overloaded. And I'm going to uh, show you in a minute. But never eat directly from the hors d'oeuvre table. Take a napkin, I'm gonna come up. take a napkin, uh, put it on a napkin, or if there are smaller plates available, it's it's more appropriate to do it that way, which we all know. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to come here. Now here, here is, oh, it's white. I'm, okay, here is an appropriate dish. It's got a, a tomato. It's got caviar, endive, with caviar that Louise made for us. It has a little egg, and it has a few bites of chicken. I mean, it might be a chicken skewer. That would be appropriate. This is not appropriate. That's too much food. It's just, I mean, you're gonna, you know, something's gonna fall off while you're eating it. <laughs> okay. And speaking of something's gonna fall off while you're eating it, one of my favorite things, it's called the balancing act at a cocktail party. And I want to show you how it works. You take a plate and you take a, a napkin and, and you you have it a little off the edge, okay? And then you take your stemmed glass and you, you put it on the napkin right there. And then you put your thumb right there. Now you have a place to put your food, your little bites, because we don't fill the plate up. We just have a little tiny bites. And you can fill your drink. And then you put it, your cocktail parties is fine to, to eat with your fingers and you just wipe your fingers here. So that is the balancing act. I think it's just one of my favorites. Okay, and so next we have uh, back to our PWC president, Sue, for tip number 16. Okay, tip number 16, knowing when the party's over. If an end time is indicated on your invitation, plan to leave then. Certainly no later than 15 minutes after the published time. A few clues to watch for are the closing of the bar, the disappearance of the service staff, the turning off of music, the dimming of lights, the removal of your tablecloth. Do you think that's obvious enough? As the chair, you can say something like, it's been a wonderful holiday celebration. How did it get so late? Now on to tip 17, graceful goodbyes. If you must leave an event early, be discreet. <clears throat> Exit quietly without disrupting the other guests or calling attention to your departure. Compliment, compliment the chairs and committee members on how wonderful the party was. Be specific about some of the wonderful details like the great program, the lovely decor, the wonderful food, and so forth. Okay, now we're down to tip 18. Okay. Lingering after the party has ended. If you have a concern about whether you should help with cleanup, count the hired staff and determine if you should lend a hand. If you stay after the party ending time ends, when stated, then you're on the cleanup team. So join in and have some fun. Tip number 19. And as event chairs it, and hostesses and guests of any parties, it's important to send thank you notes. Often it's appropriate to send uh, email thank you notes to the committee team. You have raw, raw, great job done. I have uh, a collection of thank you notes from, from Sue. And, and various people at, at PwC and it makes me so happy. You know, it just feeds me to, to do more. And it's a, a, a lovely thing 
to get a thank you letter in the mail. I mean, don't we kind of flip through it? I'll build, 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 build. Oh, there's one. It's very, it's exciting. So thank you notes are very, very nice. And emails are great and texts are, are great too. So, so remember, nothing is appreciated like appreciation. And that leads us to tip number 20. And our final tip for you is, come on up, please, because this is a team effort. Uh, please drink responsibly. Drive home safe. Call your driver or have Uber pick you up. And if you are walking, make sure you have a buddy so that you can walk home together. And now for the encore, one moment. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good job, ladies. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And that's our program. That was fun. I'm so thank fun. you for doing Thank you, Carol. Awesome job. Thank awesome. you for sharing. You did a great job. Good job, all actually, of you. Actually, I yeah. actually learned something. I mean, that whole, uh -huh. I've never known how to balance the glass and the plate. Me either. I'm the first yeah. to be too hungry. So what was a good <laughs> tip? Too much <laughs> Oh, yeah, look at Sue with that glass. Is that a Pinot? <laughs> you need to bring that to the board meeting. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Where do you find that? In the basement. Uh, in the, ba in the, the women's club basement has everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Louise and I bought those for um, the first pair evening in Paris. We did it twice with the yeah. cassoulet. 